little something different today. We're going to talk about jewelry and specifically jewelry etiquette. And uh, this kind of came to mind. Uh, I recently did a review on this ring, the uh, Lahario uh, engagement ring that I'm, you know, wearing and obsessed about right now. And I was just uh, thinking to myself how uh, the etiquette of jewelry has changed over the years, and especially with my um, my mother growing up with my mother. Hang on, I got a sippy a little bit here, mm. um, <clears throat> and seeing how they used to present themselves in uh, social events and with other women, what was deemed appropriate and what was deemed inappropriate as far as jewelry. There was definitely rules of engagement for wearing jewelry. And I think I'll, some of it has really um, gone out the window uh, since, uh, you know, maybe about 10 years or anything, uh, with heavier jewelry, mixing metals, uh, larger stones, uh, wearing pearls, you know, uh, things like that. So I just wanted to maybe have a little discussion with you guys. And I've got uh, two articles here on two different websites that I'm going to pull up. I'm going to put on my little granny glasses and then we can you know kind of have a, a little discussion about each of their talking points and I won't stay on too long but I think this is a lot of fun and I would love to hear your comments uh, below about wearing jewelry what you wear when you wear it and uh, what you what you think of all these new rules and and that sort of thing so let's go into it I'm gonna put on my little granny glasses and I'm gonna move over some of these web things here and I'm gonna go ahead and read one website now this one is I found this to be very uh, a very interesting this is a finishing school that they have is called the Belisade Finishing School and uh, very female oriented you know uh, all about etiquette and fashion and they have a number of uh, bullet points and I'd love to go through just a couple of these and see what your opinions are on it. Uh, number one here and it's called the 13 rules for wearing jewelry and I will put uh, this article the um, the website down you know in the description box below so don't worry about any of that I will let you guys read it on your own, but I wanted to pick out a couple of bullet points. Uh, number one, very young ladies should not wear a lot of jewelry. It's like seeing a toddler with a lot of makeup on, disconcerting. Instead, it is more appropriate for young ladies to wear simple gold jewelry, uh, the less the better. Now, um, I don't know what the age group is for when they say young ladies. Do they mean below 15 years or 16 years old? Do they mean below the age of 21? What do they mean by young ladies? Do they mean toddlers? Um, I'm, I'm thinking that they mean uh, young unmarried ladies, obviously. Uh, I would say in those tween to maybe 16, 17, 18 year old range. Uh, I think that is true. I do remember that um, it was appropriate for me to wear simple uh, pearl earrings, nothing dangling, simple uh, gold uh, studs, maybe later on very small hoops, very small, not big hoops like they look, you know, the size of bangles, just small hoops. Uh, I do remember um, uh, rings were very, you know, very limited. Uh, I would maybe wear a, a small little pearl ring or a plain, um, a plain gold ring, you know, that had some some decoration on it uh, but nothing nothing more than that uh, my watches were very simple and uh, that that that's the way I grew up now I know that in today's society uh, young ladies do love to show off bling bling the more the better uh, the chunkier the better I think that this kind of has has become old-fashioned or passe this kind of rule has gone you know to the other side but I still do think that 
uh, children or uh, young women or men under the age of, you know, let's say 12, do not need to be wearing uh, inappropriate, you know, and a lot of jewelry. I do think that a simple little pearl uh, stud earring for little girls, especially if they uh, pierce their ears when they're very young, um, some cultures do pierce uh, baby ears, uh, infant ears immediately, and they do put in little studs. I have found um, a couple, and I'm just looking here on the side here so I get my time here. Good. Uh, I have found a couple um, uh, that I've seen very young babies, infants with diamond stud earrings on it. I don't feel that that is appropriate, honestly, A, and B, uh, the chances of your toddler losing a diamond earring are very high. So, um, you know, if you can afford to throw away money like that and replace them every, you know, few months or something, fine. But uh, just a plain little gold stud is, is totally fine and appropriate for an infant, you know, to as they're piercing their ears, okay? So that's, that's my take on that. Um, number two, do not wear too much jewelry at any time of the day. For example, if you wear stacking bracelets, do not wear multiple necklaces and earrings. You do not want to decorate yourself like a Christmas tree. Okay. Uh, again, I think this is an older, uh, you know, a rule, but certainly you don't want to look like a Christmas tree. I think uh, a little goes a long way. A statement piece, uh, as far as a necklace, a um, uh, you know, you can stack some bracelets in some cultures. Stacking gold bracelets on one hand. Uh, you know, going all the way up. It's acceptable. Uh, in another culture, it would be overdone, maybe just one bracelet or two at the most. So you do have to see where, you know, what country you're in, what culture you're coming from, and, and you know, pay attention to your surroundings, where you're going, what you're doing, what the appropriate social you know, interaction is. Uh, yes, you can overdo it. You don't want to look like a Christmas tree. I do agree with that. All right, number three, do not wear diamonds, rubies, emeralds, sapphires, and other transparent stones before 5 p.m. They belong with evening clothes. It would be like wearing sequins to breakfast. Again, this is coming from a very formal etiquette school. Uh, so wearing diamonds other than your engagement ring, um, I do agree with that in the, you know, during the day, I, I don't feel that it's appropriate unless you have a wedding or anniversary band that, uh, you do wear, uh, consistently, that's acceptable. Again, wearing emeralds, uh, again, if it's part of your engagement ring or, or things like that, that's acceptable. I don't feel comfortable, honestly, wearing, uh, you know, rubies, emeralds, um, maybe a small amethyst. I could see that, but nothing of a, a very high, uh, you know, expensive uh, jewelry, especially in earrings and things like that. Now, some people, yeah, if it's a stud, a stud earring, they might wear a stud emerald earrings or um, I think during the day, a small stud, you know, diamond earring that you wear, again, a statement piece that you wear all the time, that's fine. But, you know, long dangly chandelier uh, diamond earrings are just not appropriate for, you know, day wear before 5 p.m. Uh, so that's just the way I was growing up. It's probably changed. Uh, I know that people wear the diamond hoops now a lot during the day. Uh, they'll wear uh, earrings, you know, during the day that are dangly. I'm, you know, I do these for you guys to dress up, but do I wear them during the day, you know, at work? I really don't. I keep it pretty simple. Okay, so there's that. Um, only wear long pendant and drop earrings after 5 p.m. We kind of discussed the drop earrings. Whether casual or formal, these types of jewelry belong in the evening. Uh, I do I do agree with the drop earrings. You know, again, don't wear the chandelier earrings, you know, to your office. Uh, I think there's a, an appropriate time for that. Cocktails, definitely. Evening wear, definitely. And as far as long pendants, um, Again, I don't think anything beyond your decollete here really long and drooping. Now, there are some, and I do see some nowadays, 
uh, appropriate costume jewelry that people wear, uh, like a stacking, you know, necklaces over their uh, shirts and everything to the office. And it, it has become the norm now to do that. And I think it looks pretty. I actually do like that uh, stacking, but they're, they're the thin chains. They're not the big rope chains, okay? They're just the thin, very thin, fine uh, chains that are multiple layered up. And then you can wear a nice blouse and look very elegant and appropriate with that. So I do agree that that could be nice. Um, number six, do not wear gaudy jewelry, whether real or fake, expensive or cheap. In general, the rule, the less is more, is the best rule to follow. The bigger the jewelry, the more you have to be careful with it. Um, and it said, uh, gaudy is rarely uh, to be made elegant. Now, okay, so I've got this. Uh, I would consider, you know, this per that statement to be pretty gaudy because it's it's a huge, huge element. It's a statement uh, ring. Nowadays, I think you can get away with it. I think in the olden days, uh, even if you had a lot of money, you just did not uh, wear it all on top of you. You did not wear your wealth. Uh, I, I remember... Um, being with my mother and my parents and growing up in that environment where, uh, you know, it didn't matter if you were uh, poor or wealthy or upper class or whatever it was, uh, you just did not show off your wealth, okay? Uh, you wore your statement pieces in the evening in formal wear. You wore a couple of really nice, uh, you know, elegant elements and statement pieces with your, you know, your gowns or whatever. Uh, but there was an appropriate time and place for that. You did not go out uh, shopping, dripping in diamonds. You just didn't do that. I think the one that really started to change that trend, uh, I think the two people that started to change that trend, and, and now I'm going to date myself, but uh, for the guys and gals out that I do talk to, you guys know what I'm where I'm coming from. The two ladies that I think changed that are uh, Joshua Gabor, and Elizabeth Taylor and uh, starting with them I think or and maybe even Marilyn Monroe to a certain extent uh, gentlemen prefer blondes and all of that um, they started wearing the bigger pieces the diamond pieces the show-off pieces uh, during the day and at any time and um, they were known for that now they made their fame uh, based on that that was like almost like their persona and their costume and i always say i'm no jaja gabor and i'm no elizabeth taylor and i personally could not get away with uh just elaborately uh dripping myself in diamonds and going about town i i think that i would be laughed at just yeah, I'm putting it out there very honestly. I think it would be a little too much for me. And uh, again, if you have a gala to go to, if you have even a day event that's super out there, celebrity status, you know, Oscars or whatever, there's a time and place for it, obviously. But uh, yeah, too much is just way too much. Um, okay, let's see. Do not mix gold jewelry with silver and rubies with sapphires. For example, don't wear a gold necklace and a silver bracelet together. It's the equivalent of wearing print over print. The exception to this rule is if you wear pieces that have been made that way, like a matching mixed metal ring and earring set or a ruby bracelet uh, bordered with diamonds. Now this definitely is an old rule. And I do remember my mother talking about that. Oh my God, you're putting you know white gold with, with yellow gold or you're mixing your metals or anything like that that is definitely something that has been retired as far as a rule I see people mixing um, you know their silver with their gold the rose gold with their yellow gold uh, mixing metals uh, you know having different uh, you know different bracelets different earrings uh, I do that all the time I really do I mean I'll have my statement gold uh, you know necklaces but then I'll have maybe a you know, white gold earring or, or something, little studs though, nothing, you know, dripping or anything. Um, I won't, I won't, I'll, I'll have maybe white gold or silver and then I'll have a, a gold watch or a rose gold watch. So 
I don't, I, I've broken those rules. I mean, I enjoy my jewelry the way I enjoy my jewelry. And if I want to wear, you know, my, you know, uh, silver ring with my gold bracelet that day, so be it. Uh, if it makes me happy and, you know, I, I definitely have retired that rule. Okay, so moving on. Let me see. My time's doing pretty good. Okay. Um... If possible, number nine, if possible, do not wear costume jewelry. Really, real jewels and medals, no matter how small and simple, will always be more tasteful. If you cannot afford real jewels, wear small and simple fake jewels. Large costume jewelry tend to have a fake and gaudy look. Okay. Uh, I agree somewhat. Um, you know, in the old days... I don't think that fake jewelry or costume jewelry looked all that good. It was, it was very, very uh, noticeable that you were wearing fake jewelry from a mile away. They just weren't presented right. The metals were shoddy. They turned your finger green. Uh, they wore off. Uh, you know, the shine wore off of them. You, you know, you couldn't wash your hands because it would rust out on you. I mean, they, it was literally disposable. You'd wear it a couple of times and you had to throw it away. I think costume jewelry today is made much better. Uh, it lasts a lot longer. It doesn't look fake. Uh, I think a lot of people wear costume jewelry or what's deemed to be costume or, or not real metal jewelry uh, to a number of events and nobody's the wiser, um, especially with earrings or hoop earrings or anything like that. They make really nice, I think Monet started it and there's a number of very upscale costume jewels, uh, jewelry in department stores now, Von Maurer, uh, Von Maurer, uh, Nordstrom, uh, Saks Fifth Avenue, um, Neiman Marcus, you name it, you, Lord & Taylor, you go into the uh, jewelry department areas, the costume jewelry, and you can find some really beautiful, beautiful costume jewelry that will la last you for a long time. And if you keep it, you know, nice and stored away and um, very elegant and very appropriate. So I think, again, this, uh, you have to take this with a uh, grain of salt, uh, costume jewelry has come a long way. I think that they're kind of a, a little bit on this number nine item, a little bit snobby about that. Um, yes, if you do want to save your money and get real uh, jewelry, uh, real gold pieces, it will take you some time to save up for your dream piece. That's totally acceptable. Then wear smaller items up till that if you feel very uncomfortable with costume jewelry. But I don't think that people should hold off wearing costume jewelry just because they can't afford the real thing. I think that there's absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous uh, rings and bracelets and earrings now available to everybody that wants uh, to look appropriate and look nice. Okay, so moving on, I'll just read you guys a couple of more of these because I, I think we're starting to get into too much time here. But um, never wear stacking bracelets uh, and bangles or anything that jangles to quiet locations. I agree with that. Uh, like offices, libraries, religious centers, and study halls, the noise they make whenever you move will sound extra loud in a quiet room. I do agree with that. I mean, you have to know... Um, you know where you are and what you're planning to do now you know if you're if it's an unavoidable non-planned um, event that you just happen to stumble across somewhere uh, and you go into an environment like that if you are able to slip off those uh, extra bangles very quickly and slip them into your uh, into your purse uh, to be put back on later on that's great uh, if you can't just you know you can't but that is true, you know, I would avoid uh, these type of, you know, areas. Uh, number 11, never brag about the size of your diamond or any other jewel. And if, a, and if anybody asks for its size, it is best to say you don't know. Talking about the size of your diamond is like talking about how much money you have in the bank. Both a no-no. Uh, I agree with that. I really do agree with that. I... Uh, I actually have a funny story. Uh, 
a very long, long time ago, uh, my husband and I were uh, just newly married, newly married, <clears throat> and we ran into a couple uh, that was my husband's, one of my husband's close friends, and uh, and his wife of the time. They divorced after a while, and um, she had never met me, had never met me. I had never seen her at all. And uh, the first thing she did, literally, and I, I could not believe this, um, out of the blue, I mean, she did not know me from Adam, and, you know, we had just met, and we were both, I guess, newlyweds, whatever, and the first thing she did was this. She literally put her hand down. She goes, oh, my God, don't you think this is so gorgeous? And, you know, this is like blah, blah, blah two-point blah, blah carrots, and da, 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 and how big is yours and everything like that and I was just uh, I, I could not I opened my mouth out of shock but it wasn't because of her ring it was not because of her ring it was because I had never in my life uh, seen such an inappropriate uh, comment come at me in my life I didn't know what to do I froze up and I'm like oh yeah it's, it's beautiful I love it and I literally put my hand down and changed the subject and started talking about something else. I did not uh, do what she did and say, oh, and mine is blah, blah, and it's blah, blah, blah. Uh, I just, I, I was appalled, appalled about someone doing that. Now, you can make a comment, your ring is gorgeous. You can make a comment, I love the style of your ring uh, as, a, as a newlywed, whatever. But to, to throw out numbers, to throw out, uh, he, how much was this or blah 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 uh, to me was was something that was absolutely a no-no absolutely a taboo and they're absolutely right that it's like talking about you know how much money you have in the bank it's nobody's business you know uh you could it, it's all about the sentiment it's what your husband presented to you uh it's you know what you guys could afford your budget whatever Sometimes it's not even, you know, it, not real. It's a beautiful costume piece, whatever it is. It's absolutely nobody's business what you paid and how big your ring is and, you know, how big the stone is or anything like that. It's just, it's just not, no, 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 not, not, not doing it. Uh, uh. Okay. Uh, the last one I'm going to say, and then we'll get off on this. Uh, number 12, wear necklaces that fit the shape of your bodice. For example, there are only three appropriate necklaces necklaces for high neck tops like the ballerina neck uh, they are no necklace a choker necklace or a long necklace the key for high neck tops is to wear a necklace that won't bury itself underneath your top uh, when choosing a necklace always take into consideration the neckline of your top or dress now uh, this is my statement piece so it just stays on me you know whatever and uh, yeah I could have gone um, I could have had like a little, and I'm looking off the side here because that's where my monitor is. I could have had a little, uh, like some pearls or a very little uh, gold uh, necklace of some sort or maybe one little, um, you know, some sort of uh, stones or anything like that. Uh, so that would have been, you know, collarbone length would have been appropriate. I could have gone way longer. I could have had uh, some dangling uh, gold uh, chain or even a long um, what do they call it opera length uh, pearls for the evening so this this top would be appropriate for opera pearls and the uh, I think they're opera length pearls are the long ones in the evening I know ballerina is the is the uh, the little one um, there's like we'll have to get that into another video maybe I'll put up one another video about the length of pearls and what they're called actually they're actually called different lengths by different names um but i do remember ballerina and i do remember opera length i don't remember what the intermediate is if you guys know leave me a comment below i'd love to hear it uh but yeah you you do have to be mindful of the uh the neckline and you don't want to bury your nice uh necklace pieces you know in a collar or or something where it's just not showing off the right way if you have a doubt and if you can't find uh, a length that works with your outfit it's better not to even put uh, a necklace on there's no harm in 
you're you can't go wrong by not wearing a necklace it's it's never going to be considered like oh my god you didn't put a necklace on how could you know how could you do this no it's always going to be appropriate not to wear a necklace uh less is always more and then just concentrate on maybe a nice pair of earrings or uh, a nice ring instead of the necklace so uh that's it and then they said the final rule is always be ready to adjust all the rules listed above well that is true i mean you always have to look at it for the appropriate uh, event, for the appropriate time, um, what's going on, where you're at, and uh, you know, and adjust for that. And uh, so that that's it for that one. Now, the other website that I just wanted to make quick mention is called thespruce.com, and it was called Jewelry Etiquette: Old versus New Rules, and. Um, you know, just real quick, it said the old rules about mixing metals is passe. Now you can wear any combination of gold, silver, pewter, copper, and whatever. That is true. We, we talked about that. Uh, women were once told that they should never wear a ring on their left uh, ring finger unless it was an engagement ring or wedding band. Now that rule is out the window. You can wear rings on whatever finger you want. That is true right now, especially with a lot of single women. They wear a lot of um, statement rings on both their right hand, their left hand. They wear multiple rings on, you know, multiple fingers, and that, you know, is totally fine now. Uh, and it said, once upon a time, it wasn't acceptable to mix real gemstones with faux stones, but now you can mix to your heart's content, and it's nobody's business which pieces are real and which are faux. And again, we did talk about this, that in the old days, uh, the fake uh, pieces were very fake looking, extremely fake looking. Uh, so nowadays, mixing fake with the real, nobody really knows which one it is. Uh, and so you can you can fill in, let's say, your um, your jewelry box with beautiful high end quality fake pieces. Uh, for certain, you know, pearls, for example, are absolutely gorgeous now, the fake ones. Uh, they look uh, totally real. You don't need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars for Mickey Moto, you know, uh, pearls of a certain, you know, uh, style and size and all that. Um, on, on a flip note, you can get really nice real pearls from uh from websites now uh the freshwater pearls for example come in multiple colors they're absolutely real they come in different sizes and they won't break the bank so you can always do that and look around i might do i might do a video on that too you know there's a lot of information i have out there that i can that i can definitely get for you guys let me know if you're interested in the comments below and i can definitely put a video up on that um, and then that's it that, you know, I'll put the, this, uh, spruce.com on the, on the, uh, description below so you guys can read all of it because I don't have really time to go through all of it. But, um, yeah, a lot of interesting information, a lot of, uh, changing of the guards and changing, changing of styles. And, um, you know, the bottom line is do what makes you happy. Uh, be, be appropriate, you know, don't call don't call negative attention to yourself, but be happy in what you do, wear what you like. And I, I think it's it's a pleasure to wear jewelry and whether it's uh, big or small or fake or not fake, um, it, it's just, it gives you a lot of happiness. And I say, you go for it. You go, you do you, definitely go for it. Well, thank you again for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments below what other types of information or topics you'd like me to discuss. I'm all, all open to anything like that. I hope you have a great and wonderful day out there. It is still hot in Atlanta, but hopefully it'll be cooling down soon. And hopefully uh, we'll get some nice, uh, nice cooler weather here shortly. I'm looking forward to it, definitely. Please give it a thumbs up if you so enjoyed my video. And um, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't. Uh, I'm hoping that pretty soon I'll be able to do a giveaway once my subscribers count goes up a little more. I think I'll start to think about doing a nice appropriate giveaway. And, uh, you know, just so much information out there for you guys that I just want you to be notified. Hit that little bell button so that you are notified when my new videos come in because uh, that way you'll be uh, 
ready to jump in on there and watch it and leave me, you know, your comments and everything, which I so enjoy uh, having that interaction with you guys. I love you guys. Pay it forward. Do something great for someone today. Be a blessing in someone's life. And I will talk to you in my next video. Bye!